Hello friends and welcome back to part 28 of this series where we'll be creating an Instagram clone in Flutterflow and Superbase. So, continuing off from the last video, we created our message functionality. And in this final part of the sort of beginner part of this series, we'll be dealing with our chats group page. So our chat group page over here, we don't have anything linked up with our Superbase database just yet. But first, let's go into our home page and we want to add a way for the user to navigate to that chat groups page. So that is done by clicking on this icon right here. So we'll open the action flow editor for this icon and we want to navigate to our chat group page. So we can close out of the action flow editor and now we can go ahead and link the data to our chat groups page. So for this chat groups page over here, you can see that we already have our list view up and ready over here. So all that we have to do is we have to call a super base query to fetch our data from our Superbase database. But before that, let's sort of analyze what kind of data we need. First, we need our profile picture of the user. Next is the actual username of the user itself. So if we go into our Superbase database, you can see that we cannot query our chats row over here since our chats row does not have the data that we need, our profile picture as well as username of the user. It only has the UUID over here. So the data in our list view over here is actually the user data, not what we want in our chat data. But we need our chat table, the, specifically the users column, to tell us which chats the user is currently in. So this is pretty complicated, but what we first have to do is we first have to query our chats table so that we know which chats the user is in. So to query our chats table, we actually don't do that in the list view. We can do that in our chat, chat groups page over here. So with the chat groups page selected, we can actually go ahead and add a query over here. And this will do a super base query for our chats page. We want to return a list of rows and for the filter over here, we only want to return the chats where the user is currently in. So we want to check if users and list contains our authenticated user. Where is that? Our authenticated user's user ID. So now this gets all the chats, all the chat rows over here where the authenticated user is inside the chat. And then now in the list view itself, we will do sort of a sub query based on the data or the chat rows that we was returned in the previous query. So in this sort of bottom level query, we will do another super base query. But now we're not querying our chats table. Instead, we are querying our user data table. So user data table, we want to return a list of rows. And now for the filter, we want to filter where our user ID is inside our chats rows. filter list item and for the filter condition it will be item in list and so is and now we want to add sort of this bottom level query for a super base query and now instead of querying our chats table we actually want to query our user data table instead so for this user data table, we want to query where a list of rows where our user ID is inside, so is in is contained by our chats rows map list items. So we want to select the users column over here. But since the users column itself is a sort of list, so we need to filter the list items and we need to add a filter condition over here. So we need to add a single condition where our item in list is not equal to our authenticated user's user ID. And then finally, we need to set the last available option to item at index and first item since there's only one item but Flutterflow only recognizes it as a list. All right, so we save that. And we confirm this and now we have a bunch of rows over here. So I know that was a bit confusing but hopefully you were able to follow through. So for this circle image, we can now link up the data. 
So it will be our user data row, profile pick, and for this username, it will be our text, user data row, and the text, the user, the username over here, and you can give it a default variable value. Right. And now when the user clicks on this container, we want to navigate them to our chat page. And in this chat page, we need to pass the parameter. So we need to pass the parameter of our chat row. So now for this chat row over here, we will need to select the chat row and we need to filter the items. And now for this filter condition over here, we need to give it multiple conditions so we can combine a condition. So the first condition will be where our item in list users and the users column list contains the item of our user ID the other person use user ID and now it needs to also contain so the item in list users list has to also contain our own authenticated users user ID so this is an end condition so both of these conditions must be met and now with this filter condition it will only select the row in our chats table where our users list over here contains the person that we selected the user id of the person that we selected as well as our own authenticated users user id but one more thing that we have to do is we have to get to the item at index and first since flutterflow is built to recognize this as a list still even though there's only one item Right, so now you can click on confirm and that should be it for this. All right, so I didn't know if you could notice, but when we were trying to sort of do the queries to display all of our user data over here for our chats groups, it seemed a bit more complicated and more complex. We needed to do two separate queries on two separate components over here. And in order to pass our chat group or chat row into this parameter over here, it was much more complicated compared to the other times that we did it. So why this occurred, it actually has to do with our database architecture for our chats table. So in this chats table, we did something different from all of our other tables. We introduced an array as a column in our users column over here. So in fact, when you're designing SQL databases or relational databases, you want to try to avoid arrays in columns as much as possible. Let me actually show you the correct architecture that we should have used. And let me illustrate it over here. So let's say I have a bunch of users over here. One of these sort of circles represents a user. So users. Then let's say I have certain chat groups over here. Let's say I have two chat groups. So these are the chats. So this represents the users, these represents the chats. So for my first chat group, let's say it's this user as well as this user. So they both form a chat together. And for this chat group, let's say it's this first user as well as this last user over here. So what can we analyze here? Well, we can see that for this first user over here, it has two relations coming out from this user. So this user is able to be a part of multiple chats. And that is actually the same thing for these two users as well. If we include one more chat group over here, these two users can also be a part of this chat group. And now they also have multiple sort of relationships coming out of them. And if we go ahead and analyze our chats now, we can see that there are actually multiple relations coming into the chat itself and specifically there are two so what does this tell us over here when you see multiple relationships coming out from one user as well as multiple relationships coming into a chat this tells us that we have a many to many relationship so and logically this makes sense because a user is able to be part of multiple chats and the chat group is able to host multiple users. So when we have a many-to-many -many relationship, what we should actually do is that instead of putting the relationship inside our chats table, which is what we did inside with this list of users over here, instead, 
what we should do is we should so we should create sort of an intermediary table over here. This can be user chat relation. So this table then stores all the relationships between users and chats. So the users will be stored here and then it will relate it to each one of the chats. So this is very similar to our user follower relation table actually. And this was actually what we were supposed to do in order to sort of create the proper architecture in order for us to make this sort of querying and fetching of data much more simpler in our Flutterflow app as well. But I chose to opt for a more improper structure over here using a list inside our column to show you how important proper database architecture is. Because if we use sort of this other type of practice for our database architecture, it will lead to more problems down in the future, such as in this chat groups page over here. So, yep, it is important to use proper database architecture, which I have used previously in this course as well, for our user relation table as well as our post-like relation table. Alright, yep, but I'll just leave it for now, and it can be sort of your own assignment to sort of try to replace this architecture, this user's architecture, with the proper architecture using some sort of user chat relation table. So let's go back into our Flutterflow project. All right, so that should be it for this. And now we can go ahead and test it out. All right, so Tesma has just loaded up and let's click on this chat icon to see our current chat groups. So you can see that we have Axolotl as a chat group over here. If we click on it, you can see that we are brought to the Axolotl chat group where we actually sent the message that we have here previously. Right, oops, and one last thing to do is to actually implement this back button. So with this back button selected, let's quickly on tap and let's quickly just add a navigate back to action. Alright, so if we have multiple other users that have created chats with us, we shall be able to see them here as well. So this search bar over here also currently does not work just yet, but in the previous video, we also learned two ways of how we can do a simple search algorithm inside Flutterflow. So since we already learned how to do it, I won't be teaching it here again, but I would encourage you to try to do it on your own to sort of implement the search functionality again so that you really know how it works and you can say that you fully understand the concept of how we can do a simple search in Flutterflow. All right, yes, so great. We are finally finished with our basic version of our Instagram clone right here. In this basic version, you can like posts, you can comment on posts, you can even follow other people as well, you can follow other people, you can unfollow them, follow, as you can even message them over here. And it all works inside of our app here. You can also edit your own profile, and you can save all the changes over here, edit your profile picture, and do all the great stuff that Instagram allows us to do. So congratulations on finally finishing the basic version of an Instagram clone app. Now you're equipped with all of the basic skills that you need to actually build your own apps as well. So once again, congratulations on making it to the end and thank you for supporting this channel by watching this series in its entirety. If you're interested to learn more, stay tuned for the more advanced part of this series where we'll be dealing with definitely more advanced concepts as well, but they are definitely essential in your mobile apps. So thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.